Hey everybody, you're watching Something Catchy. Today we're blue crabbing just north of Tampa, Florida. I got my first trap in my hand right here, and I can actually already see there's a bunch of crabs in it. If you look over the edge here, it's real shallow here today. We got a negative tide, and it is just full. If all of them look like that, we are definitely going to be eating good tonight, guys. What do we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and that is a huge crab. So if all of them look like this, then we will definitely be eating good tonight. So what I like to do with these is just pry this open and I keep a bucket up here on the deck just because the kids are down there and I don't want to have crabs running around everywhere. But they will take a toe off. <laughs> so I just empty it out like that. And then these will make it into the cooler here in a minute. You have to keep these out of the sun and you want to keep them damp. We got a cooler back here that has no ice and you can keep them like that. If it's really hot outside, it's not right now, it's January. But if it's hot outside, you'll want to put them uh, in a cooler with ice on the bottom and then a towel and the crabs on top and that'll keep them fresh all day all right so we keep a cooler empty on the boat just for this purpose it's cold outside like i said today so you don't have to have ice in here we just put the crabs just like that in the bottom you don't want them to be upside down sometimes they'll be hooked onto each other like those little monkeys you played with when you were a kid but you just try to flip them and then after they calm down just double check and make sure none of them are upside down they'll rearrange themselves so you always want to make sure you latch it believe it or not that's easy to forget this one still has bait in it. Uh, you can rebait it every time if you want, or if you come every day, maybe rebait it every couple of times. This one's still got bait, so we're gonna leave it. We've actually got chicken drumsticks in there right now, basically because it's cold and nobody wants to throw a cast net when it's cold. So, oop, about lost my crab tongs there. Don't lose those, I don't so wanna get pissed. So that's a good reason to uh, keep everything clear of the rope. I've actually broken my hand like that, so you wanna make sure anytime you're messing with ropes near a boat, you don't want your hands tangled in it. Like I said, I've actually broken my hand doing something with rope on a boat. So after that's off, soaks for a day or two and you'll be full of crabs. All right, so we just pulled one of our traps and there wasn't anything in it. Now that doesn't happen too often, but when it does, it's probably a good idea to move your trap because somebody's either pulling it or there's just not many crabs going to that area. So when you're looking for a new area, you want to look for somewhere that doesn't have a lot of uh, strong current. That way you don't get a lot of seaweed and stuff like that, get caught on your trap and then you end up losing it. So I like to go kind of like along the bank of a river near a point So where we live, it's real shallow. There's a lot of rocks. You really gotta know where you're going around here. We're only in, this is pretty messed up. They're actually warranty in this. That's a whole nother subject, but you can see we're only in a foot of water and you're gonna see about a 14 foot drop on one side here in a minute with some crazy rocks. So it's like right here, there's a big drop off. And you can actually see, look, you can see those rocks there and it'll show just kind of what you're looking at there's a big drop there and then when I turn sideways here you'll see yeah there you go so you can see there's a ton of giant rocks right there if you know how to read this you know that's pretty crazy looking and uh, so you just really got to know where you're going if you don't you can really do some damage to your boat around here so she's just gonna go ahead and put them in the bucket and then we'll get these in the cooler with the other ones so we got three more and we're gonna add those to the rest and then we'll be on our way to some crab cakes so stay tuned for that Hi. <laughs> So the other day we were out here putting these crab traps in and it was windy and cold and it's still windy. I don't know if you guys can hear us. Luckily, most of our traps are in the backwater now so you guys will be able to hear us, but I am sure glad it's warm today. Katie, what do you think? Is there anything in there? No. Nope. Empty. So this trap's empty. That's all right, sometimes it happens. Luckily, we've got more traps to pull and we were actually out here yesterday, so we've already got some crabs at home. It was just so windy yesterday, we couldn't record anything. It's still pretty windy today, 
but it's not as bad and it's nice and sunny and warm out today so it's it's better anyway we're gonna get onto the traps and see how many more crabs we got I'd say we got probably 10 or 12 so far and another 10 or so at home so we're doing all right uh, let's get to our next traps have you guys had fun yeah. yeah that's good the kids always like to come out here it's nice and warm and they get a lot of snacks you know it's one of those things you get on the boat and it's a snack attack so this time of year we actually find that most of the crabs are in the backwater I guess they just, in our area at least, they come to the backwater because the backwater is significantly warmer. We have a lot of springs that feed out 70 degree water year round and the gulfs in the 50s. So I'm assuming that's why they come in here. Comment below if your area is similar and you also catch more crabs way back in the backwater in the winter. Or is it more crabs offshore or near shore in your area? Let us know. Just look how clear this water is. It's probably three foot deep. And it's just crystal clear. I mean, it does not get much better than that. This is where we catch our crabs in this beautiful clear water like this. One time Katie and I were gigging out here, right here. And we looked down and there was an alligator below us. Gigging at night, you have the lights on so you can see everything underneath you. Especially because the water is so nice and clear like this. We're actually going to make a gigging video, so subscribe if you guys want to see that stuff. I'm telling you, it's real interesting being able to see in the water at night. You'll come up on redfish and snook and everything like that, and they'll just be sitting there. It's so cool. You can't, uh, can't gig any of those. You can gig sheep's head. That's what we're after, and we net blue crabs. Because believe it or not, there's a lot of ways to catch blue crabs. You can put them in traps and catch them with, you know, like these big full-size traps like we got. You can actually use the little chicken on a string kind of deal and just pull them up on the pier they have little collapsible traps you can use and then you can actually net them at night and that's personally my favorite way of doing it the, the crab traps this is convenient that way if you're just coming out here fishing you you know you have a crab trap you can pull and have a side of crabs with your dinner but if you're coming out here gigging it is so fun to just scoop them up at night and just one after the other you got everybody on different sides of the boat trying to scoop them it's a good time so hopefully we can make a video for that soon of that soon for you guys so this goes a lot smoother if you've got somebody with you luckily i do and so what we do is we go to the first trap and she'll pull that trap and start emptying the crabs out of it and start rebaiting it by the time we get to the second trap she's got that one ready to go and I'll go ahead and say, all right, go ahead and throw it. And she'll throw it and then go ahead and retrieve the next one and be emptying the crabs and stuff out of that while we're on our way. Now this is our last trap. So when you get to the last trap, you just throw it and obviously you're on your way. Make sure your bait hatch is down, your crab trap is closed and you don't want it in the way of boats because they will run it right over. What's your favorite thing about crabbing, Kenzie? Crab cake. Crab cake? You think so too, huh, buddy? Yeah. Is Kenzie going to teach you how to te uh, make crab cakes tonight? Yeah! All right, high five. <laughs> Mama's holding the camera. That's Dad Dad's favorite thing. Yes. Greg, what's your favorite thing about crabbing? Crab cakes. <laughs> So something I like to do on the way in, I always try to push about 10 mile an hour and just give the kids a dolphin show. Sometimes the dolphins will come up and do uh, tricks in the wake. You just kind of trim your motor up and push some wake and they'll come up and play with you. I'll roll some footage of that now so you guys can see a few of the times they've done that to us. All right, everybody, we're back at the house now and I've had my crabs soaking in this ice water brine. This chills them out. It doesn't fully kill them if you don't leave them in there for longer than about 10 minutes. 
They just get nice and calm so that they won't pinch you when you're cleaning them. So I'm gonna take my first crab, put my finger right by the swimmer fin, and peel the shell back. Normally they stay together, but sometimes they break apart. I've taken the face, the gills, or the dead men fingers, whatever you want to call them, and the apron off. So today we are going to take them and put them in some crab cakes because Mackenzie has been dying to have some crab cakes. We haven't been crabbing for a bit because it's been really cold out through this year. This winter's been really rough. So we've been all needing our crab cake fix. We do have a lot of fun sitting around a big plate of crabs and everybody picking them and cleaning them and just eating them like that. But our kids are still really small and it's really hard for them to get the meat out. And when we eat crabs, it's more like the, I'm feeding the kids crabs and <laughs> I can barely even sneak a bite in. I'll hand them a whole pile and they'll be done with it by the time I can even get a bite. So putting them in a dish is just a little bit easier. I can't remember if I mentioned this while we were out on the water, but we do not have a size limit when it comes to crabs. You can keep female crabs, you can keep small male crabs. Sometimes we will keep really small ones for bait when we're going for redfish, and it's a really good redfish bait. But um, we don't keep them to eat. Like if, they're, if we catch them in the trap and we're not going out for redfish, we'll just let them go. Same with the small females. There's just not really a reason to keep them. And you're, you are allowed to keep female blue crabs unless they have an egg sponge on their backside. So you'll see the apron full of a bunch of bright orange eggs. It looks like a sponge. So you just toss those back. Actually, I haven't ever seen one with an egg sack before. But hopefully we'll see that one day and we can get on video and show you guys. All right, you guys. We're going to teach the kids how to shuck crabs. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Jameson, put yours on the little table. <laughs> All right, Jameson, you may need some help. Here, stand over here by Mama. Come right over here. Kind of bucket. Yeah, I got you. Yeah, still you... alive, but they're just so cold when they, they, oh, no, sleep. All right, oh. so I'm going to take the dax off for you guys because they're a little bit hard. Wobble. So you just pull it off like this. <laughs> and throw it in the gut bucket. That's the dead men fingers. That's the gills. All right, buddy, look. This is what you're going to do. You're going to pull these off. Pinch, Mom, Can you pull right? this off? Yeah. Pull them off. Pinch? Two hands. No. Are you going to wake up then? No, no, no baby. Pull yes, he goes. <laughs> it's okay. We're going to spray them up. So you're going to pull these fingers off, okay? <laughs> pull those out. Pull them off. Good job. No, they are too itchy. <laughs> it's us, oh, Good job. Got. You got it. Yes, those are good. Good job, Kenzie. Oh. All right, you want to help me with this one, Jameson? Good. You want to pull that off? No. For me? No. Okay. You do it. You got to take the rest of these fingers off, and then you're gonna pull the face off. All right. So the next thing you have to take off is their apron. See this little piece right here? That's their apron. That. So you take their little claw, and you can just sort of wiggle it underneath there, and then pull it all the way back. Okay. Apron? Yeah. Hey, can I pull it? Yeah, you want to help pull one? Here. Oh, I already pulled this one off. Here, you can help me pull this one off. Stick that under there and pull that back. <laughs> pull it all the way back. There you go. Ew. Yeah, I get all the poo myself. on that. Good job. Hey, what is it? Poo. That's poo. That's why we like to clean them before we cook them so we don't cook them in their poo. <laughs> all right, now we're going to spray these off. Thanks, uh, kids. Can right. I clean it? Yeah, now we're going to clean them the rest of the way by getting all the guts out of them. Oh, yeah. You guys did good. Yeah. All right, hang on. we got to lay them up right here. Hold on, hold on. All right, you guys are going to want to stay back, okay? So you don't get sprayed. All right, buddy? Hey, hey. All right, now that these are all nice and cleaned off, I've put them in my steamer basket to my Bayou Classic Pot. It's a really good heavy duty pot. If you want one for yourself, just click the link in the description below. All right, we showed you guys how to clean them. Now we're gonna show you how we steam them. I've got them all laid out nice and flat in the basket. And I've got my big Bayou Classic Pot right here. And I'm gonna put a little bit of, wa of um, vinegar in with the water. This helps them get picked nice and easy. Now for the seasoning. I take a little bit of salt, and just throw it right on there. I like to use sea salt and some Old Bay. If you guys have any other seasoning suggestions, please let me know in the comments below. 
I also think that when you clean them before you cook them, you can really get that seasoning all good in there. While you're steaming them, if you want to throw in some corn and potatoes and onions, that's also really good too. But since we're making crab cakes, there's not really a need to do that. All right, they're in the pot. I'm going to steam them for about 18 minutes. These kids are so fast, we can't even keep up with them. <laughs> you wanna go see if there's a strawberry that we can pick, bud? Yeah. All right. The strawberries are doing real good this year. Got a ton about ready to ripen. If I see a good one, I'll let you know, bud. You don't wanna pick them when they're like that. They're not completely ready yet. Ah, there's a gem hiding. We don't put any chemicals on these guys, so you can eat them right from the Thank garden, bud. You. I don't want to eat it. You don't want to eat it? You want to save it for later? Well, then I want it. <laughs> no, it's for later. Okay. <laughs> Let's go check out what Kenzie and Daddy are doing. That one too. Got some dead leaves. Uh oh. Look in here, though. I want to show you. We got the romaine. Oh, our cauliflower. Some of them are getting big. They're See? getting killed. Look how bad the oh, heat was getting no. it this morning. That was one. I heard if you spray the, them, Mom, that they'll be all right. That's the last one, Mom. This is broccoli. That's the broccoli. Someone's in it. <gasps> the broccoli's in there. Hello, Hello. little broccoli. <laughs> That's the baby. We've got some celery. Soon we'll be putting our mm. celery in our crab cakes, but uh, it's not ready yet. We've got red it's romaine. out here. Butter crunch lettuce that we've already harvested a few of. Kale, collards. What is this? Cabbage. Greg's over here getting some mustard. Have some better shears to be good. Yeah. <laughs> the trunk on there. Yeah. It's getting hot, so everything's starting to bolt. So we want to start picking them now. Beautiful. There's some more mustard. Our tomatoes look sad over there. Don't mind those. We're about to pull those out and put our new starts in. Yeah, just last week it was freezing. We had icicles on our citrus, and now our <laughs> romaine and uh, mustard are bolting. Yeah. It's too hot now. Uh, charred all needs. Get a bunch of charred needs picked. Yep. Look at all this. This is beautiful. This yeah, one's this. like my favorite. It has such a good mild flavor too. This one, this mustard, this curly stuff is a little bit spicy, but it's still good. Oh my goodness. Check this out. Look at these. These are going to be peaches. Aren't they beautiful? Look at that. We're trying to start up a gardening channel. So if you guys want, are interested in gardening, go ahead and follow us. It's called the Harris Farm. We'll put a link in, in the description below. But yeah, it's just going to show a little bit more of like our farm life instead of boating life. Should be some interesting stuff on there. We've got a bunch of loquats and avocado trees. I'll show you guys these. All right, so this is our other loquat tree. It's so big and beautiful and it smells so good. It's like, like fresh, clean laundry. I don't know how else to just describe it. It's beautiful though. We got a bunch of little pollinators on it little bees flying around. Well, we've got our greens and our salads for the next couple of days, and our crabs are done, so I'm gonna go ahead and wait for those to cool off before I show you how I pluck them. All right, so she's cutting up some cucumbers. We're getting ready to have some cucumbers, onions, banana peppers, and jalapenos in vinegar. We put a little bit of sugar and some salt and pepper in there. That comes out real nice. Yeah, that's so good. It's like a twist on the traditional cucumbers and vinegar. My grandma used to make that, my mom used to make that, and it's so good, but this just gives it a good little kick. We're gonna do some smoked jalapeno poppers tonight too. We got homegrown jalapenos and homegrown banana peppers. We're gonna do both those stuffed with cream cheese and wrapped in bacon on the smoker, that'll be good. And we're gonna do uh, these fresh greens from the garden as the side. So it's gonna be crab cakes, 
jalapeno poppers and uh, cucumbers and onion and then this fresh green salad too. So I'm gonna use some of the cucumbers and onions for our salad and I'm gonna make this really good orange vinaigrette. Yeah, look. That is huge. I mean, that is the biggest banana pepper I've ever seen. We grew these, this is actually pretty cool. The banana peppers I'm used to are closer to this size, you know, just maybe in between the two. This is a Serrano. I think I already said that earlier, but. This is the first time we've ever let one of these get all the way red. We're gonna put that in this uh, cucumber vinegar deal. They say it, they're supposed to be sweeter when they're all the way red. Yeah, normally when you get them from the store, they look like this and they're much smaller. Mm -hmm. And this I is like sort like of ripe, yeah. The greenest. Yeah, sometimes if you get them in the jar, they'll have like a little bit of this mm -hmm. red hue to them, but not much. Just depends. Nothing's better than homegrown. That's right. Mmm, <laughs> that's really good. The red ones almost have like a completely different taste from the yellow ones. All right, now time for the jalapeno. I'm not adding any of this to our regular salad, but it's gonna go in the cucumbers and vinegar. So this is the cucumber, onion, jalapeno, and banana pepper deal. It's got the vinegar, and this is the fresh green salad she just made. This looked pretty good. She's getting ready to make some vinaigrette salad dressing for this. Yup, it's gonna be so good. It's orange vinaigrette. I've made it before with lemons and red lime, and it was a really big hit. So now we're gonna try it with some fresh squeezed orange juice. Two tablespoons of white vinegar. So we're gonna use um, two tablespoons of honey. You can use Dijon mustard, brown mustard. I've used um, honey mustard before. The honey mustard was really good. And then you wanna do some ground black pepper. Yeah, there's honey in it. All right, hold it out. All right, dump it. Good job. I'm gonna cut the orange. And we're gonna put some orange in here? Yes, That's orange. So weird. Ew, it looks weird now. Beautiful Florida orange. Look. Looks juicy. Mm -hmm. Okay, go look it. So we're gonna use about two tablespoons of orange. Okay. Mm -hmm. One? It smells really good. Two, yeah it does. Florida oranges are good. Yes they are, that's right. All right, done. For those of you that don't know, Florida oranges are not always perfectly pretty like the ones at the store. We do have um, an interesting environment for them, plus citrus greening, so you just gotta deal with that. All right, so if you guys have never made jalapeno poppers before, they are so delicious. Jalapeno poppers are a bit spicy and Greg and I love them a lot, but the kids don't necessarily like them that spicy. So we're doing the banana peppers for them and for us because they're just really tasty that way. It's like all the flavor of a jalapeno popper without that extra kick. This is a jalapeno. It's just a really ripe jalapeno. Normally you guys don't see that in the store because they don't ever pick them this ripe. But yeah, so that means that it's at full heat and it is very hot. All I do for the stuffing is take cream cheese, cheddar cheese, you can use uh, Monterey Jack, Pepper Jack, whatever kind of shredded cheese you like, and green onions, and I chop those up, mix it all in there, and now I'm gonna stuff the jalapenos. So just take it and layer it in there. If you have any like brisket or pulled pork or rib meat left over, you can lay it on top and it's so good. Now that the peppers are filled, I'm gonna wrap them in bacon. To wrap smaller peppers like jalapenos, I like to cover the top of it and then wrap it around. It just sort of keeps that cream cheese from flowing out. And the bacon pretty much just sticks to itself. If you guys don't know, now you know. bacon to brown up a little. You don't want all your cream cheese to boil out though, so keep an eye on them. These are one of my favorite appetizers. 
Well, in order for us to make crab cakes, we gotta pick our crabs. First, you take your crab, and I like to split it in half. And then take the claw off. There's always a little bit of meat at the claw. Put it into your bin, save the claw for later. And then I like to peel this back plate off. If you can see, there's the top of the crab and here's the back of the crab. That's what I mean by the back plate. So sometimes they'll peel off all in one big chunk, but in this case, it's not really working like that. So I just take the fin, swimmer fin, separate it, take that piece of meat off of there. Make sure you don't confuse your waste bowl with your meat bowl. I've done that a couple times. Peel the next part off. Get that little piece of meat out of there. And just separate the legs and you get little crab lollipops. If you were to be eating these right now, you could just eat them. But I really don't like to eat cold crab. So Jameson's gonna help us make the crab cakes tonight. In the last video, Mackenzie helped us and she did such a good job. So now she wants to help teach him how to make crab cakes. I think it's really important to make sure that you're including your kids in cooking and fishing or hunting. Whatever things that you like to do, try to include them on that because they'll like it too. And they'll grow up to learn that and love it just like you do. Jameson's already asking to go fishing just about every day. He loves it so much. When we took him snapper fish fishing in one of our videos, he was so thrilled. That was one of the first times he really got to get on some fish. And then we took him fishing for redfish and he just fell in love. All he wants to do is reel up the big fish. It's so cute. So if you've never caught blue crabs before, if you've never cooked them, never cleaned them, and have only bought lump blue crab meat, this is why it's so expensive. <laughs> it, there is a lot of work go that goes into cleaning these crabs and getting them ready just for regular old lump meat. I think when we were shopping at the grocery store, I saw like, I think it was like a pound of it for almost $30. I don't know, it's probably different in each location. It varies like how fresh it is and whatnot. This was just like a regular grocery store. So I, I don't think that it was that fresh. But still, 32 bucks. But I don't blame him for that price because this is some tedious work. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna show this to you close up. First, take your crab, split it in half. Then take the back belly side of it Peel this part off. Get all that like that, and it just separates real easy. Mmm. So I'm definitely not the world's fastest blue crab shucker, but I think I've got the hang of it. Time to crack some crab claws. <laughs> All right, take that off of there. You're gonna get shells flying everywhere, I always do. Our dogs have come to love crab shells. 
<laughs> it might sound weird, but whenever one falls, they just come up and start munching on it. So strange. So with the big part of the crab claw, you just sort of pull it off of there, and there's a piece of cartilage in between the two pieces of meat, so you don't want to eat that part if you're just eating them straight up. If you're shucking them, obviously you can avoid it, but don't like break that part off of there when you're eating it. <sighs> Crunchy. <laughs> <laughs> Here. All right, the poppers are looking good. We're gonna go ahead and hit them with some barbecue and they'll be done in about 15 minutes. All right, I just got the jalapeno poppers off the smoker. They are looking good. These are one of my favorite things we make around here. All right, so now we got everybody here. We're gonna do the crab cakes. I'm pretty much gonna be the cameraman. They're gonna show you how it's done. Yeah, yeah! Can't wait. All right, let's get hey, started. Hey. Kenzie, what are we starting with over there? So we're going to start with the egg. You get to do the egg. All right, one egg. Carefully, Pull don't it. two hands. <laughs> Can I do the A one in? Yeah. Go ahead. Tell them what the next ingredient is. The next ingredient you get to do is the A one. It's yes. actually Worcestershire. Worcestershire. That's okay. It looks similar. Yeah. Good job, buddy. <laughs> you might, Bubby, scoop that out for her. Oh no. All right, now that they've got that fairly good mixed up, you guys go ahead and you can continue mixing. I'm gonna dump the crab meat in. Grab this, Bubba. Okay, grab, grab this. this. Just gently stir, okay? You don't wanna break the meat apart too much. You're just trying to coat it. Ooh, Bub, watch out. All right, I'm gonna get the crackers. So that is what you want it to look like. That's yeah. right. And they're gonna do it like little crab patties like this. All right, you guys, oh. go ahead and squeeze this a bunch. Squeeze it, bang your fists on it, whatever. Go ahead. Uh oh, uh -oh. <laughs> go ahead and grab it. <laughs> Maybe we could whack it. <laughs> Can I do that? Like, just whack it so hard. That's All right, let's bring this back here. We already dumped everything that we need to right. You guys can, thank you. You guys can dump these crackers. Let go. Here you go. Go ahead. If you guys can't tell the jalapeno poppers were a hit, everybody just killed them. Yeah. Mackenzie was on the banana peppers. Well, that mine. You guys yeah. having fun? Yeah. Let's mix and crack. Yeah, Do you guys like doing catch and cooks? Yeah. <laughs> Put a little bit of breadcrumbs in there. That's what we did last time, did we? Yup, we did do that last time. Just smells so fresh, right, Dad? Make sure you hold the bowl. Don't don't lose the bowl. You love. Bubs already on the mustard. All right, put that in there. Normally we use Dijon mustard. We're all out of Dijon mustard, so we're using brown mustard. It's You're gonna do about two teaspoons of it. <laughs> Let's get mixed. Ooh, mm -hmm. You got it on me. <laughs> and then Old Bay. Mm, oh. Can I do the salt one? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Thanks, buddy. Open it. We already used it. You don't want to get this in your eye. That's right. <laughs> chop, 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 chop. Chow, chow, you chow. guys are doing really good. Thank you. You're welcome. Look at it. They will thicken up a little bit in the fridge. They go in the refrigerator yeah, for a while. Yeah, they refrigerate for 30 minutes and then you fry them. Yeah, you cannot skip that step. We've tried it. You can also bake these, but we're going to fry them no, today. All right. We prefer peanut oil. You can use whatever, but peanut oil is the best, in my opinion. You don't want these super thick. You want them to be pretty uniform. I doctor for that. Again. That's okay, bub. That's a great meal. Thank you for your help, Jameson. You did good, Jameson. Yeah, you're you want a banana pepper you bite? Hungry. Here, I'll give you a piece Me of banana pepper. Um, that's good stuff, isn't it? Oops. Spoiled kids. You guys hit that thumbs up button if you think they're doing a good job making these crab cakes. I'm gonna go get my Yes, that's a good idea. 
All right, these are gonna go in the fridge for about 30 minutes, and then we're gonna get to frying them. We forgot to put the lemon juice in, so we're just gonna drizzle a little on top. These are our homegrown lemons, so can't forget that. Believe it or not, these grow on a plant that only grows about eight inches tall. It's called a micro dwarf tomato plant. I'm actually gonna be making some videos about the gardening kind of stuff. If you guys wanna see that, we've got a channel called The Harris Farm. I'll be posting some videos on there. And I've also got a channel called Greg Harris. That's just my personal channel. I post some of my gardening stuff on there too. I'm gonna to show you guys how I like to make my greens. This is the best way in my opinion. You can use this with collard greens, mustard greens, kale, spinach, whatever works for you. We're using mustard greens today. So you're just gonna blanch them in a cup of water for about five minutes, just until they're like a little bit soft. You don't want them like all the way broken down. And then you're gonna take them off the heat and remove that water. All right, now that these are semi-cooked down, I'm gonna strain all the water out and we're gonna set them to the side while I cook bacon and onions. Look at how much volume you lose. I mean, in the beginning of this, this was full. Now it's like <laughs> hardly anything. <laughs> All right, so I've rinsed my greens with cold water to sort of stop the cooking process while I cook my bacon and onions. All right, I'm gonna show you guys my secret ingredient. It's chicken bouillon. You can either use one cup of water and one chicken bouillon cube, or you can use one cup of chicken stock. And that seriously gives the greens the best flavor. You ever cooked uh, green beans or greens before? and you're like, man, why doesn't this taste like the way my grandma made? It's because she used chicken bouillon and she didn't tell you that part. <laughs> she wanted you to figure it out on your own, but I'm gonna give you guys the tip. All right, now that I got my greens all mixed in there, I'm gonna mix it on low heat for about 10 minutes. And don't forget to add salt and pepper. All right, now that my oil is hot, my crab cakes are chilled, I'm gonna put these in the pan. Ouch. <laughs> Burn myself in the process. These don't take that long to make. Those look good. Yeah, they look delicious. Take a look at those guys. Oh my gosh. Can't wait to try those. Look at those bits of crunchy goodness. Mm -hmm. mm. The saltine crackers in this really, really gives it a good crispy touch too. But you also wanna add in those breadcrumbs, just a little bit of breadcrumbs. You don't wanna make bread patties. You want crab cakes, so don't add too much breadcrumbs. But the breadcrumbs really just help it stick together. We recently had crab cakes somewhere and it wasn't very good. You could definitely tell that it wasn't fresh crab meat, but I mean, that was to be expected with where we were. And um, it was just very bready. Like, I don't know, I really like little filler crab cakes. You can add celery, onions, peppers. There's tons of things you can add to them, but I like them just the way they are. Yeah. All right, well, we're getting ready to sit down and eat dinner, but I just wanted to let you guys see everybody yeah, taste test these try. crab cakes. They look delicious. Mm. They are so good. What do you think, Kenzie? You like it, Bob? What do you think, Jameson? You like it? Delicious. Delicious. You taste it? Yes, I did. Mm. All right, well, we're gonna sit down and eat dinner. These crab cakes look real good, and I'm excited to eat them, so we'll catch you next time. <laughs>